Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's WeWork. This is a company that was just started a few years ago and has already ballooned into one of the most valuable companies in the US with a valuation of over $20 billion. What's it got planned next on its path to global domination? So Conrad, WeWork raised what, $4.5 billion this year at around. What does that kind of money mean for their competitors and for them? Well, for them, first of all, it just makes it a lot easier to expand across the globe, right? A lot of that money is actually earmarked for their expansion to East Asia. So they're going to be a lot more aggressive going into China, going into Japan. And that's a big deal for WeWork, right? Because they talk about this big global network that they want to build. As far as its competition goes, it matters because what they can now do is they can, for example, uh, it's easier for them now to offer discounts to competitors. It's similar like what Uber does if someone, if there's a new competitor in that market, they'll slash their rates for months. They'll essentially bleed them out. Which is yeah, it's, it's can... legitimate, it's legal, it's, it's perfectly understandable that they do that. The question, of course, is, is it good for the market? Is it mm -hmm. good for the industry as a whole? Because presumably, it would be better for everyone if there's, if there's multiple companies mm -hmm. that, that provide co-working space. Mm -hmm. It's not just one monopolist. So just like Compass on the residential side has resisted being called a residential brokerage, WeWork has always resisted being called a shared office space company. And now with some of their latest acquisitions, they, they just bought meetup.com. Uh, they're pushing into retail, as you've reported. They're turning into less of an office space company, at least they hope, and more of something completely different. So they call themselves a community company or some variation of that word. We always call them a co-working company, we meaning the real deal, because that's their core business as far as we can tell. That's where they make most of their money. But you know, Miguel McKelvey, one of the co-founders, he gave a speech where he was being interviewed at a Bloomberg event a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And he said basically that from the very beginning, the idea was never to be just a co-working company. The idea was to be a community company that's involved in a bunch of different industries, businesses that are all real estate related. So mm -hmm. they launched their gym, they announced that they're going to launch a school, as you said, they acquired a coding school. They're quietly pushing into the retail business too, which, which we first reported, mm -hmm. which hasn't really been announced yet, but which they're working on sort of behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to infiltrate into every, so basically toggle off work, go live in a we live. They might go into, there's so many different businesses that they're thinking about. Basically, that essentially capturing the attention of that consumer pretty much all day, whether they're at work or living somewhere or entertaining themselves or so many other things or educating their kids. The analogy that was always made is they want to be the Facebook or the social network, the physical social network, mm -hmm. which sort of implies the Facebook of the real world mm -hmm. or the Google of the real world. The philosophy, however, for a long time with WeWork was the little guy. We're, we're looking at the community of we, the creators, the, the freelancers who don't necessarily need an office, who might be in Malta one week and then New York another week and then London the next week. However, some of the biggest deals that they've done this year have been with as blue chip, as sort of big ticket corporations as possible. I'm thinking of IBM at 88 University, Amazon and Herald Square. So talk about that model and what that means for them. Yeah, the 88 University building is interesting. So what they did is they, they took a building, like any other WeWork building, they built it out, they turned it into a WeWork space. It's like a, I think it's a 12 story building, I, mm -hmm. I forget. And then what they did is instead of renting individual desks out to small companies and freelancers, they just took the entire building and gave it to IBM. And it's now an IBM office building. And I think one of the reasons that getting into this is um, they just realized that there's only so many entrepreneurs, there's only so many freelancers. At some point you hit a ceiling. At some point there's, at some point every single freelance in New York City has a desk and then mm -hmm. you're WeWork and you will ask yourself like, how am I gonna keep growing? And I think what they decided is we're going to keep growing by going after the big companies. Mm -hmm. And with the kind of money that they have, we talked about just four billion plus uh, this year, they can achieve that. They can go after those goals. They can acquire companies who come in their way. But they're also having a little bit more friction with competitors than they did before. So talk a little bit about that. I've heard this a couple of times from people within WeWork and close to it is that they don't have a competitor, right? Mm -hmm. It's like... I think it's a thing that tech companies in general yeah. or self, self-described tech companies like to say is we're so unique, there's nothing like us, no one competes with us. I think the reality is different. There's, there are a lot of companies that offer flexible workspace to small companies. Mm -hmm. And even though WeWork's business with big tenants has been growing, I think its core business is still the small companies. That's still where they make, sure. or at least small tenants, that's where they make much of their money. What happens is that there's just a lot of competition. It's hard for WeWork to convince these companies to go to their spaces. Mm -hmm. And um, they've admitted that occupancy is down in their building. So it used to be, I think, 97, 98%. Mm -hmm. Now it's closer to 90%. And, and that's not ideal. You know, if you want to go out to investors, if you want to launch an IPO and you mm -hmm. tell people, well, occupancy is down in our buildings, it doesn't, it doesn't it look too yeah. great. 
And, and one way to try to get occupancy up again is just to go to these competitors and go to their tenants and say, hey, why don't you, why don't you switch to us? Mm -hmm. So they, they try to go to these, uh, they try to go and, you know, essentially poach customers from their competitors. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't, but they've been playing a little bit more of hardball recently. Reportedly, what Adam Newman, the co-founder of the company, has been doing is he went to landlords mm -hmm. who signed deals, some sort of partnership agreements or leases with WeWork competitors, and then just criticized them, basically mm -hmm. complained, like, what are you guys doing? Why are you signing our competitor? And, and that's, that's an interesting technique for a company like WeWork to use because they obviously have a lot of sway, right? Mm -hmm. they're, they're a huge tenant, they, they're very, they give them influence. You yeah. know, if, if they're out in the market taking up huge chunks of space, every landlord wants to be friends with them, yeah. at least for now. You talked a little bit about this investment that came from Masayoshi Son SoftBank. You know, completely game-changing, it leaves them in, in sort of a field to themselves. Uh, but before that, back in the day, they, they got a very interesting investment from a very interesting character that you wrote about by the name of Joel Schreiber. So he is a you know, very, typical New York real estate investor, right? Mm -hmm. Someone who's been below the radar, hasn't been written about, been doing a lot of deals. He's been doing a lot of buying properties, fixing properties, flipping properties. Mm -hmm. um, he's a typical real estate investor. If you, you know, on the face of it, nothing unusual about him, really, mm -hmm. except at some point in 2010, he had a meeting with Newman and McAlevey mm -hmm. about a potential building that mm -hmm. they might rent for the first WeWork space. Mm -hmm. And he was somehow so taken by the idea that he decided he wants to invest. And so according to Miguel McKelvey, they weren't actually raising any money, but Joel Schreiber still insisted he wanted to invest with them. And so that's sort of how this really obscure real estate investor became a shareholder in WeWork. So the big question is, how much does he actually own? Mm -hmm. So he apparently was offered a third of the company. According to my sources, he never actually bought a third of the mm -hmm. company. He never actually committed the money that he once said he would. Mm -hmm. So his, his actual stake might be closer to 1%. When you started digging into his past and looking at who this guy is, you found that he came with his share of controversy. So. Yeah, he is definitely a controversial figure. There's a lot of people in the industry that don't like him. There's mm -hmm. also plenty of people who like him, who've partnered with him, who think he's great. But he's been sued a lot. I think he's been sued a dozen times over the last few years. Mm -hmm. Often he's been sued about money owed, about commissions he owed, about deals that fell apart. Mm -hmm. And what do you see for WeWork in, in 2018? Do you see the public market? Do you see it in going public? next year? Yeah, that's, that's the question. I mean, I'm sure they don't need the money at this point. Um, for them, the question probably just is, what's the, what's the best point? How, how ambitious are they? Do, you think that they? do they think that they maximize value if they go public now because mm -hmm. there's so much money around the globe, stock markets are at record highs? Or do they think if we wait a year or two and grow globally, we might actually be worth a lot more and mm -hmm. it's worth waiting? Mm -hmm.